the study uh, parametric equations. Okay, we are going to uh, describe a curve in the xy plane using parametric equations, using two equations instead of one single equation. Let me begin with uh, the following problem. Okay. So here's a, here's a, yeah, consider the graph uh, uh, y equals x cubed. X is between zero and one. So the graph is a curve, okay? But not every curve can be described by the graph of some function. The graph is a curve, okay? The definition of curve is more general than the graph, okay? Where graph means a graph of function. So this is a, this is a, a piece of the graph, okay? <clears throat> the starting point is zero, zero, then any point is away in the way. Okay. So how do you how do you describe this uh uh this curve as a curve, right? You can describe the curve because the curve is a one-dimensional object. So you can use one parameter to describe all the points. Okay. Consider the curve as a graph, then you can describe uh, uh, by, you know, you can, uh, uh, let, uh, so let's see. The first uh, uh, parameterization is like x equal t, and the y equals t cubed, right? So t is between zero and one. So you you think about t is a, is a time, okay? t is a time. So when time changes from one to, from zero to one, then, the point on the curve moves from the origin to that end point, okay? It's going that direction, okay? So this is a, we use those two equations for, 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 for the coordinates to describe all the points on the curve, okay? Uh, yeah. Of course, we can describe this special curve using the equation. Actually, using equation is just y equals, you know, x cubed, right? So the y variable cannot be, um, cannot be arbitrary. If x is given, then y is going to be x cubed. So our, our parametric equation is essentially the same as the original function, okay? But we can also change it to another one, like x equals t squared, y equals t to the power six. And this also gives you the same orbit. Okay, when t changes, right? So the 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 parametric equations are not unique for the same curve. Okay, the, they are not unique. Now, sometimes for some curves, you cannot uh, uh, describe it by as a graph of function. Okay, consider the consider the curve. given by the equation uh, uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, okay? So this is a curve described by equation, not by a uh, function. So this is a complete circle, like a circle with radius r. How can I describe this curve, okay? I can describe this curve, uh, using two uh, graphs, okay? That's then, uh, then uh, we have problem here, right? So you can say this is y equals r squared minus x squared. This is y equals negative r squared minus x squared. You know, yeah, this circle consists of two graphs. Each graph is a function of a function, is a graph of a function, yeah. But, so, But we can also use a parametric equations to describe the x coordinate and the y coordinate. How to do that? Use the angle t, okay? So this is going to be r cosine t, y equals r sine t, okay? And the t is from zero to two pi, so you gotta complete the circle. Okay. So this is a, a this is an, uh, uh, yeah, this is an, uh, uh, parametric equations for, for the circle. When t increases, 
the point okay, moves counterclockwise along the circle. Right? When t equals zero, that's the starting point here on the x-axis. When t equals pi, two pi, you're coming back. Again, this is not a unique parameter transition. I can also use another one, it's r cosine um, s over, uh, for example, two pi. Okay, y equals r sine s over two pi. Then this time, s is between zero and uh, and uh, two pi. Let's see. Two uh, let me think about. No, not divide by two pi. Divide by uh, s is. Divide by R. Okay, that's my mistake. Okay. You can modify the parameter. So when X S equals two pi R, then you get sine two pi. Okay, then you get back to the origin. Okay, so there are many there are many uh, uh, parameters you can use. So what is S here on the picture? On the picture. The S is, is not the angle, the S is the arc length, okay? It's arc length. So if you know the value of S, arc length, you know the point where it is. This is a starting point, initial point, initial point, okay? So you're going uh, counterclockwise, and you can use a parameter S to tell the exact location of the point on the circle. So when S increases, and then the point moves counterclockwise. Okay, so then you describe the whole curve using the arc lens. Okay. okay. All right. Now, if we are uh, this time, we're going to do the inverse problem. Okay, we are given. We are given an uh, uh, equation x equals 3t plus 2, y equals 2t plus 3, t is between negative 1 and, and the positive 1. Okay? And we're trying to sketch the graph of this function. Uh, the graph, yeah, we were trying to sketch the, uh, the curve uh, determined by the parametric equations. Okay. So when t changes, right? Uh, okay, so how do we do that? Well, if uh, if you have a computer, how does a computer? Computer just take 100 values of a t between negative and positive one, and calculate the x, y values, and plot this 100 points in the, into the x, y plane. So you get a bunch of points, but if you, because the resolution of the screen is not great, so you, you what you see is a strict line, okay? Is a, is a curve in the, in the, in on the screen okay but if we zoom in you get a bunch of points there instead of a curve so computer does not draw uh, uh yeah does not draw the continuous line on the screen but what you see is just a line it's like a movie it actually gets a sequence of pictures but when you look at it you cannot tell the difference <laughs> you see somebody's moving right uh on the screen so the same here okay so we can use the same idea to do but but it's better to know the shape of the graph first before you sketch, because it's possible you can make a computation mistakes, right? Then you connect to those points. Uh, you can only plot. Uh, you can only plot a few points on the screen uh, as, uh, on the piece of paper, because otherwise you don't have it. You know, you don't have enough time. So anyway, let's let's make a, a, a chart. Okay. So this is a this is a t value. And here's the x and the y value, right? So we get uh, when t equals negative 1, what do you get x? x is going to be uh, a negative 1. y is going to be positive 1, right? Now, I just choose the three points, okay? When t equals 0, it's 2. Uh, 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 when t equals 0, uh, x is 2, y is 3. When t equals 1, x is 5. Uh, and uh, yeah, y is also fine, okay? 
of course, it's harder to, if you have limited time, it's harder to draw the graph in three points. Okay, when x equals negative one, y is positive. Okay, when x equals two, y equals three. When x equals five, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You see, that's a problem. <laughs> uh, actually, it's a strict line. But if we connect them, it looks like, oh, you know, it looks like a curve, okay? So if you see the, if you see uh, X linear depends on T, Y linear depends on T, it's better to change the relationship, direct relation between X and Y. So from the first equation, you solve for T, T is going to be X minus 2 over 3, right? And you put into the second equation, Okay, so what you get is you're going to get 2 over 3x minus 4 over 3 plus 3. So let's simplify it a little bit and plus 5 over 3. Okay, so this is a linear equation. So the orbit described by this uh, parametric equations, okay, the curve described by this parametric equation. I think about this is orbit of a moving object going in that direction, right? When t changes. And it's going to be part of this uh, strict line. So actually, you only needed to know the starting point and the end and, and, and the, the initial, yeah, ending point. So here's negative one and the one. That's going to be five and the five. So you just needed to draw the strict line, and that is a piece. So if you know the graph, if you know, yeah. If you know the equation in x, y, uh, it probably has helps you to sketch the graph. All you have to do is to, to determine the starting point and the ending point, okay? Uh, if you just look at the equation here, y equals, y equals 2 over 3, x plus 5 over 3, the equation, the graph of this equation is a whole line, okay? But we only have a portion of that. Because, okay, because t is between negative one and positive one. So, so my suggestion to you is, if possible, to 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 get the equation in x and y first. Then maybe you are able to uh, you are able to quickly determine the shape of the graph and there's a curve. Yeah, and then in, if it's a straight line, you just need two points. You don't need to have three points. Just let t code be negative one and positive one. You get two points. Then you connect them. It saves you time. Okay. Otherwise, just like what I did, I draw a curve on this, on that. You know, it's not very precise, and uh, you probably yeah lose points on that. Okay. Not all the problems you can you can do that. For example, like a t square plus t. And the y equals t squared plus 2, and the t is between negative 2 and the positive 2. Okay? Uh, it's harder to find the relationship between x and y. You can, but uh, do you really need it to do that? Then you can use that. Uh, I think it's not easy to do because, because when you solve for t from the second equation, you get plus minus. You got two pieces here. Okay? You got two equations. So what we do is we, yeah, we're trying to choose as many values as possible, okay, and connect them, okay. So let's look at the integers, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, okay. At least we need a five point. <clears throat> and compute carefully. When t equals negative two, I think that this will be two. 4 plus 2 is 6. When t equals negative 1, I think it's 0. Uh, that will be 3. And when t equals 0, that's still 0. That will be 2. When t equals 1, it's 2. That's 3. When t equals 2, that's 6. And that's 6. All right.
Right. So those are the points as coordinates. Okay. So when x equals two, y equals six. Right. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Somewhere here. That's the first point. When x equals zero, y equals three. One, two, three. Okay. When x equals zero again, and uh, that's going to be two. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. That's a further point. So when x equals two, y is three. So two, three is here again. Okay. When x equals six, one, three, four, five, six. Then you have point here as a six. So it looks like going in that direction and going this way, okay? Right? You know, it's step by step when t increases. So my guess is you have to pass this point and go in that. It's like, you know, when you when you take a picture on the sky, some sky flying, right? Going that direction. You you don't have a you don't have a sequence of picture, the positions. Then you guess somewhere here. So, so this is a, probably the point we have to figure it out, <laughs> right? How do you figure it out at that point? Well, I think as, an, as the smallest value of x, we have to figure it out, right? So x equals t squared plus t, which is t, t plus one, right? So when t equals zero, when t equals negative one, uh, uh, just look at, this is a quadratic function in t, right? So if you just want to draw the graph for x, that's x, that's the t, okay? Right, when t equals zero, it's a parabola opens upward. Okay, when t equals one. So clearly, when t equals uh, when half x gives is a minimum value. So the x, the minimum value, is going to be when half times three of. Uh, hold on. Uh, I draw the opposite direction. This is a. Picture just here like that. Okay, negative one. Okay, not that part. So when uh, t equals negative one half, and this is going to be negative quarter. Okay, so the smallest value for x is yeah, x equals t squared plus t is always greater than negative one quarter. Okay, and it's possible equal to negative quarter. Okay, when t equals negative one half, it's a, this is a fast yeah. And then at that, that point, uh, when x equals negative one half, when t equals negative one half, the y value at that time, y value is going to be, let's look at this special value, okay? So sometimes we need to get more precise picture. So when t equals negative half, x is going to be negative quarter, y is going to be uh, negative one half square plus two, uh, Anyway, it's a number slightly larger than, than two, okay? So somewhere here, this is a, yeah. So this is a point, negative, uh, negative, uh, negative quarter and uh, four of nine, okay? This is a point on the most left side. So we are not able to uh, find uh, the direct relationship between x and y. You can solve for t in terms of y, but it's plus minus, right? Okay? And, uh, and uh, it's complicated, you have t questions in x and y. All right, so let's take a look at the next problem.
x equals t squared, y equals t to the fourth. t is between one and the negative infinity. Okay. All right. So this one is easy to find relationship because y equals t squared and the square, so it's going to be x squared. So the graph must be a portion of, of the parabola, right? So the curve is a, is a portion of the parabola, okay? Right? Because the x, y always related by this equation, okay? Right? So the question is what part, what portion of the parabola, right? What portion of the parabola? y equals x squared is this part, right? So we have to describe it. Okay. At least as we needed to know two points, right? Uh, the starting point t equals negative one, uh, t equals positive one, right? Then zero and one, negative one, negative two, for example, right? x and the y. Okay, so when t equals one, y is one, x is one, y is one, when t equals zero, x is zero, y is zero, when t equals negative one, that says both are one. When t equals negative two, that's a four, 16. Okay, so, so how, how does it work? Let's see, I'm going to use a red hat, okay? When t equals one, x equals one, y is here. Then when t increase, uh, decreases, it's going this direction, okay, okay to here. Okay. Now I should say it decreases, I have to use the arrow symbol. When t goes in this way, when t from negative two to positive two, okay, okay, from negative two to positive two, it's somewhere here, negative two, when t equals negative two, it's a four, uh, 16. And then when t increases, you get to this part, okay? And here, this is a t equals negative two. And here, t equals negative one. And then t equals zero, okay? And, this, and the surprise is going back to this point when t equals one, okay? So the correct picture should be, it looks like that. It's a, it's a fly from very, far away, infinity, go in to the, yeah, fly to the origin, and around the same orbit, make a U-turn, okay? And, and going back, but then a stop at this point when t equals one, because the time, if you think of t is the time, time is from negative infinity to one, okay? So, so the, the, the arrow should be in that direction. So that's the picture. So we not only just draw the orbit. Okay? If you think t is a time, and x, y coordinate, x and y are, are depends on time t, and there are, there's a coordinates of a moving object in the x, y plane, then you have to draw the orbit, and also uh, the, the orientation, the direction. And where's, you know, the <laughs> direction in which the object is moved and moves, okay? And also should them indicate the time, like a t equals one, t equals negative one, okay? Okay. So the next problem, uh, this is the x equals t squared, y equals t cubed. Uh, no restriction on t. Yeah, t is uh, from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now you can find the direct. Uh, you can find the direct relationship because I can solve for t from second equation. T is going to be y to the one third. Okay, always you can solve it. That you cannot use the first one. First one, you get plus minus square of x, not, not good. Okay. So right now you have a unique solution. So this, put here x equals y to the one third, and square 
So y is two thirds. So you get a strange equations. How, yeah. So the so graph, uh, the the curve, okay, or the orbit of this moving object is going to be put portion of the of the graph of this equation. Okay. So the curve is a portion of of the graph. Okay, determined by by this equation. Okay, we don't know how to draw this graph. Uh, well, we have a general idea as how to draw this graph. Okay, this is a graph. It's similar to uh, parabola opposite to the right. Okay, and yeah, let's let's look at the general graph. So uh, this the graph looks like that. Okay. This is the y can be negative, can be positive, but x never be negative. Okay, in general, in general we have, yeah, this is specific. In general, in general, if we have a x equals y to the to the alpha, okay, alpha is positive, then the graph is a, either like that or like this. Okay, they're always like a parabola opposite to the right, similar to the parabola, like x equals y squared. But the alpha could be a, a fraction. If alpha is a fraction, then there's a cusp there. If alpha is a positive integer, it just smooth like a parabola, okay? Yeah. And, uh, uh, well, not exactly, because if alpha is three, <laughs> then it's a, it passes through, the, okay? So this is a, uh, I should say if alpha is a fraction and the fraction is going to be an even number like an n m n is even, then it's always square, you know. So it's always on the right hand side. Otherwise it could be yeah, could be uh, uh could be uh uh it yeah going through the origin and go to the left hand side. Okay. Uh yeah, all right. So we know the graph looks like that. Okay, the question is, does it occupy the whole uh, graph? Does the curve occupy the whole graph? Or it has starting point, end point, you know, somewhere, okay? So we can, uh, we can draw the table, okay, T, X, and the Y. Okay, I cannot draw too many points. I start from negative one. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Okay, that's enough. So I get when x equals negative two. Now when t equals negative two, then this is gonna be four, and that's gonna be negative eight. When t equals negative one, X is positive, Y should be negative one. And zero, zero. And this side is always positive, it's symmetric. And here's four, that's eight. All right, so now it's clear. Four negative eight is here. So when T equals negative two. One and a negative one is here. There when T equals negative one. And this is zero and zero is here. And then, and the one and the one here when t equals one, when t equals two. So, so the picture, it's clear to me, the graph going like that, okay? Okay, it's from infinity to go, it goes to infinity, okay? It is from infinity and it goes to infinity. Why from it uh, goes to infinity? You just let t goes to infinity, right? So uh, x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity, as t approaches infinity. So that's the reason it goes to infinity. So we're not stuck. Okay, it will not stop. All right, let me, uh, let me talk about the graph again, okay? So, uh, because you want to know the, the general shape of the graph, okay? Uh,
Okay. If we have x to like a two over three, something like that, then you see that uh, the graph. Yeah, let's use one. So why never be negative? The reason is this is defined to be square of x to the one third. X could be negative. Okay. And if you find a derivative, you find a derivative doesn't exist when x equals zero. So the graph looks like that. All right. Now what happens if I increase four over three? Still even, right? So that means x is to the one third and fourth power. So y never did negative. So the graph is still above the x-axis. But this time, is x to the one third and then to the fourth power, okay? And if we find a derivative, I think the derivative exists this time. Yeah, the derivative exists at the origin, okay? The derivative exists because the y prime is going to be four over three x to the one third. So, so the derivative zero and x equals zero. That means it has tangent line, horizontal tangent line at its origin. So it cannot be the cusp like that, right? It must be smooth. So the graph looks like that. <laughs> yeah, the graph must look like that. And if you if you're trying to find a second derivative, you find that the second derivative is positive everywhere except for its origin. So that means the graph can give up. Okay? You remember the graph the graph, yeah, 165. The second derivative is going to be four over nine and the x to the negative two over three, this is always positive, so can care about. Okay, so the graph looks like that, okay? Uh, that's it. Now, how about y equals x to the three over, uh, turn this upside down, right? Now, in this case, because you have to define You have to define x to the one half. So x cannot be negative. Okay? X cannot be negative. But you can do, if you differentiate twice, I think it's still the second derivative positive, so it's can give up. Okay? Look at this picture. Okay? The reason is the first derivative is positive, the second derivative is positive when you differentiate twice. Okay? That's the reason can give up. Okay, for 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 uh, for x greater than zero. Okay, so that's the reason the graph. But if uh, if uh, I change the problem here, three over four, right? The small change. Okay, then the first derivative doesn't exist. Okay, at its origin, the left side. Okay, we it's not defined when x is negative. So the left side of the derivative doesn't exist because when you differentiate, it's going to be three over four x to the negative one, one four. So when x approaches zero, it's get it, y prime approaches infinity. What does that mean? That means the tangent line is more more vertical. Okay, so the, it goes like that. Okay, because if we have a bunch of tangent line, you see more more vertical. Okay. So, so the graph must look like that, okay? And if you second derivative, so it must concave down. And the second derivative must be negative, okay? For part of, for, on the right-hand side of the axis. I can guarantee it, it must concave down. So this is how do you draw the graph. If you get an equation in x, y, okay? And the, that's how do you draw the graph. All right. Uh, If, uh, uh, one more picture, okay. If, uh, if x equals like a three over five, then this is a defined for the OX, okay? This is a defined for the OX, and I'm pretty sure this is a picture looks like that, okay? Okay. When x is negative, it's still defined, and even y is negative. And uh, the tangent line at that particular point is vertical line, actually. 
Okay, so I should, uh, yeah, I should re-sketch the graph a little bit. Okay, like that, okay. <coughs> Okay, right, so take a look at when x equals uh, this, oh, sorry, this is a uh, y, yeah, okay. Right, so draw this graph, right? Yeah, t to the fifth. Yeah, t to the fifth. Okay. Step one, you can solve for t, right? T equals x to the one over fifth, right? Then you put into the the second formula. So that's why you call x to the one over fifth cube. This is what we got at the very beginning, right? About, right? So you do get an equation in x and y, and at y equals x to the 3 over 5. Okay? Then you get the graph, but we, we want to, I, I'm pretty sure this occupied the whole curve, but we have to, so we have to check where the starting point, where the ending point. When t equals negative one, x is going to be negative one, y equals negative one. When t equals zero, x equals zero, y equals zero. When t equals one, x equals one, y equals one. So clearly, it's going in that direction. Uh, you can quickly uh, yeah, plot three points. Right? And uh, I think it's guaranteed it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity. And when when uh, when t goes to infinity, right, x goes to infinity, and uh, and the y goes to infinity. So it's going all the way up. Okay. Yeah, that's enough. So you can get you know use a yeah, if possible, use the equation in the x, y plane. Uh, in uh, equation x, y, then you plot them in the x, y plane. And the, the, the curve described by primitive equation should push on that. All right, so let's take a look at the next problem. Okay, when x equals half of cosine t, y equals 2 sine t, t is between 0 and a pi. Okay, how do you do that? How do you sketch the graph? Yeah, you can select a few values of t and compute x and y, then you plot those points. But it's better to tweak, it's better to draw the you know, it's better to get to the equation in x, y first. Okay, you maybe can quickly determine the shape of the graph. So cosine t is gonna be two x, right? Sine t is gonna be half of y. So clearly, cosine square plus, cosine t plus sine square t is gonna be one. So two x squared plus half of y squared is gonna be one, okay? This is a equation, elliptic for elliptic, uh, elliptic equation, you know, this is for ellipsic, okay? So you can x square, and uh, I can write in this form, okay? And uh, the graph will be, okay, the graph of this equation will be elliptic, okay? And uh, I think, okay, how do you draw the ellipse? When x equals zero, y is going to be plus minus two. Okay. When x y equals zero, x is going to be 
plus minus half of y. So, so just to draw the four vertex. There you go, the ellipse. Okay. Okay. I don't know what's going on. So, so the graph of this equation will be ellipse. But uh, the curve described by parametric equations probably is just portion of that. What you have to do is just to choose, probably choose three points enough. Imagine, right? When t equals zero, yeah. This is a t. I think uh, I think there's something wrong with my uh, program. Yeah, it's clearly says <laughs> it's gone. You know, it cannot be open. We are sorry. When was this coming up from the last time? It's open. Okay, we are. All right, uh, yeah, you have to make a, a you have to make a chart. Okay. And choose a few points. All right, so I cannot see. <laughs> All right, let's stop here. Let's skip. Start normal. Okay. Okay. So if it's not still in the same problem happens, I have to close it. Okay. So let me do this a little more. I don't know what. All right, so let's give up, okay? I'm good. I don't have a time to fix this. Okay, so we stop here.